Come on, if you would, just let's put our hands together for Jesus, everybody. Let's give him a praise early this morning because it's worthy of all the praise. All the glory belongs to him. Come on, you can do better than that. Let's just give Jesus praise in the house this morning because it's worthy of all the praise. Look at your neighbor and say, he's worthy of all the praise. Come on, tell somebody else, he's worthy of all the praise. All the glory belongs to him. Our kind Father, again, we thank you. And we bless you for this day, this hour that you allowed us to assemble ourselves together. We thank you, God, for salvation. We thank you for the Holy Ghost that's down on the inside of us. And God, we thank you for these, our people that have got out of their beds early this morning to meet you. God, we want to have real church and real worship this morning. We just don't want to get up and just things be as usual. But God, we want to feel your glory. We want to feel your presence today. And we tell you to have your way through the preached word. God, we pray that you be glorified. We pray, God, that we be edified. And we pray, God, that the devil be horrified. We love you and we appreciate all that you've done. And the least we could do this morning is say, Lord, I thank you for all that you've done for us. Come on, say, Lord, I thank you for all that you've done for me. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And all the people of the Lord say amen and amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Give an honor to the most high God who is the Savior of my life, Jesus. So let's just give Jesus another praise, everybody. And to our presiding bishop and the first and second assistant presiding bishop and the presidium of this church, and to Bishop Daryl Hines, my friend and brother, and to the general secretary, Bishop Lyles. Amen. God bless them. God bless Mother Lewis in her absence as well. And to my wonderful supervisors who was here this morning, Mother Lee Van Zandt, God bless you. Amen. God bless you. God bless Bishop Hutchins and Bishop McMillan as well. And God bless, amen, my lovely wife of 40 years, Lady Karen Harmon, if you would stand, amen, so we can celebrate you. Let's celebrate her, if you will. And we celebrate my daughter, Talisha Harmon Pretlow of 38 years, amen, and my granddaughter, London Pretlow, amen. You see her waving, and my son-in-law, uh, Pastor Ron Zell Pretlow, who is helping me on this morning. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Is there a word from the Lord today? I believe it is. And what I like about early mornings, amen, when you get up this early, you just ain't coming to play. You come and they receive something from the Lord. Do I have a witness here? Amen. If we would turn our iPads, phones, our Bibles to the word of the Lord, Romans 8 and 18. Also, 2 Corinthians 4 and 15. Amen. We can stand for the reading of God's holy word. God bless those that are from the Merlin Eastern Shore and all of Merlin. We all won. Amen. Thank God for Merlin. Romans 8 and 18. And it reads as thus, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. 2 Corinthians 4 and 15, we're going to end at the 18th verse. For all things are for your sake, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many repound to the glory of God, for which cause we faint not, but through our outward man perish. 
yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For a light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and external weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are seen. For the things which are seen are temporal but the things which are seen are eternal, are not seen are eternal. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I just want to talk about and this morning, the title that we'll be dealing with this morning will be, It's Going to Get Better. Why don't you look at your neighbor real quick and tell them it's going to get better. Come on, look at somebody else and tell them it's going to get better. As the flower fadeth and the green, at the grass fadeth and the flower fadeth away, God's word shall stand forever. How many of you have come out out of the comfort of your bed this morning? By faith, believing it's going to get better. Uh, how many in here have gone through something or you're going through something right now? Well, I flew all the way from Maryland to tell you it's going to get better. Uh, as I read these scriptures, the question arises in my mind. Not so much what God is saying to us in this text, but why he is saying it to us. Many times we focus on what he's saying and not why he's saying it. And many of us know what the scripture says to us, but have no idea why he's saying it. My brothers and sisters, it is critical to understand why God says what he says concerning us. But as I look closer at the text, I ask myself, why is he saying this to me? Because I ask myself why I begin to ask, what are the deficiencies? What are the faults of mine? What are the pitfalls that I might have? And, and I ask myself, what does this word relate to me or how does it help me? God is telling us here in the text because you have become a disciple of mine and one of my chosen one, you are going to suffer for my name's sake. For the Bible declares, you, if you suffer with me, you shall also reign with me. But the good news is what you're facing or going through right now or what you're dealing with in the present life is not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us. In other words, it's part of the process. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, whatever you're going through, it's part of the process. Mm. I've, uh, I've designed, he got the, a design for our lives. He says something uh, that relates to the present in this text. And then he tosses us into the future. And he is literally saying to us, both in both of these texts, that something is going to happen that's going to negate or counsel out what you're dealing with at this present time. In order to grasp the power of what's going to happen, you have to be able to get through whatever you're going through. I'm a firm believer. If God brings you to it, he'll take you through it. Uh, so he takes my present and gives me a vision of something that he is working out 
and then he saves in me what you're going through right now is part of the process of getting you where I want you to be. He's telling us in other words, he has identified me with what he's getting ready to do and I'm to take this word and massage it in my mind. And I have to deal with what's in front of me right now. Knowing that what I'm dealing with in front of me is not the way the things will always be. It's, critical, it's a critical thing to understand faith. Faith demands a certain believer's uh, behavior. If I'm a child of God, I cannot deal with situations in the same way as a non-believer. Uh, if I have faith, I'm identified with God. And it brings with it an expression that is based on the impression that I have because I trust the word of God. Anybody in here trust the word of God? But my brothers and sisters, there comes a time in our lives where some of us, because of the many situations we are dealing with, we will falter. We will become dismayed and weary in our walk with God. But God told me to tell you it's going to get better. One might say the condition of despair is sin. Whenever I'm at the point to where I feel circumstances are too big for me, or I feel I cannot overcome my present circumstances, or if I feel I cannot uh, be all I could be because of my circumstances that I have to face. I believe I have begun to walk in the spirit of unbelief. When that occurs, hopelessness starts to develop. When I get to the place where I cannot project anything into my future, or when I get to the place where I'm looking for trouble and more trouble, or I'm looking for heartache and more heartache uh, I cannot think myself uh, above what I'm going through and still remain calm and the same person the enemy needs to know I don't have to be changed by my circumstances the enemy needs to know I don't have to become ugly because what's around me is ugly I don't have to be nervous because I'm not sure how things are going to come out. I still can know who I am because I identify with the power of the living God. It's a terrible thing to be in a state of hopelessness and not knowing what's going to happen. Not knowing how things will turn out. Not knowing if a way will be made or not. And because of my circumstances, we tend to decay in frustration. The question arises, why do I have to deal with these circumstances? What is behind all this pain? What is behind all this sickness? What is behind all this drama in my life? The question arises because your circumstance breeds frustration. Well, in about 2000, 2011, I was diagnosed with cancer. I was diagnosed with prostate cancer. And when the doctor told me, it seems like I was numb to the fact that I had cancer. And I was a believer, knew God was a healer. I knew God was a deliverer, but I was wondering why would God allow this to happen to me? And I said, God, I got faith to believe you're going to bring me out of this. But as the weeks and months went by, seemed like this preacher here who thought he was anointed, who thought he had power, who thought he had faith, the devil was slipping to my bedroom and talk to my mind in the midnight hour and tell me I wasn't going to make it. And I began to lose hope and I began to lose faith. And I went through this for a while. But one day I was sitting down on my sofa and I was watching TV in my living room and God spoke 
spoke to my spirit as I was going to a pity party situation. God told me to spell the word cancer. And I said, Lord, I will spell it for you. I said, C A N C E R. He said, This is what I want you to do. I want you to take the last three letters off. And I want you to tell me, uh, What do you see? And I told God, I see the word can. He told me that's right. I can heal you. I can deliver you. I can open doors for you. I can make ways out of nowhere. Somebody say, yeah. Uh, uh, God is a healer. God is a deliverer. God is a way maker. Say, yes. Yes. Yes, please. Thank you, Father. He is a way maker. If you know he's a way maker, look at your neighbors. Say, the God I serve, he's a way maker. The God I serve, he will deliver you. He will open doors for you. Somebody shout glory. Somebody shout glory. Glory to the Lamb. Yes. Yes. As I close, thank you, God. Thank you. Questions arise because of my circumstances. Frustration sets in. And when we are frustrated, we have a tendency to throw up our hands and give up on God. Throw in the towel. But move with in my sister. Don't let your circumstance swallow you up and distort you under something that you are not. I refuse to be transformed under something different than I am. Say yeah. I refuse to have a sad long face because of my circumstance I refuse not to enter in his gaze with thanksgiving and enter in his courts with praise I refuse to let what I'm going through change my prayer life I refuse to let the devil change my relationship with the almighty God Say yeah, say yeah, yes. Uh, uh, thank you, God. Don't let the devil change who you are because of your circumstances. If you could just get to it without losing your mind, things. I gotta get better. Look at your neighbor and tell them if you could just get through it without losing your mind. Things gonna get better. Yeah, it's critical, my brothers and my sisters, because we understand that anytime you know yourself, you have to know. And whom you identify with is saying this to us because we have a tendency to lose focus when things aren't going the way we desire. But I come to realize this one thing. Uh, uh, ooh, one thing we want to do. In the midst of our trials, in the midst of our situation, don't quit, don't give up. Yes, you just want to throw your hands up and be done. But I found that frustration has a way of 
observing our energy. Uh, I'm taking away your purpose from you. If you have a tendency to look at your circumstances of keeping instead of keeping your eyes on the prize, what Satan will do is let an abundance of things come in your space. Uh, you have to fight things around you in the atmosphere. Uh, but God wants you to go for you. Tell your neighbor that God wants you to go through. God wants to give you the victory. Give your neighbor a high five. Say he wants you to have the victory. Yes. Yes. I don't care what the devil does. Victory is mine. I don't say that. Get me behind it. Come victory right now. Today is mine. Say yeah. Say yeah. Yes. I got the clothes in here. When the devil comes my way, I roll up my sleeves. Because at the end of the day, I will accomplish what God has purposed for me. You have to be adamant. You got to be adamant with the devil. You got to let him know, not only do I talk to God, but every now and then, I'm going to talk to you. Put you in your place. Sometimes we have to tell the devil, you don't have no power. Your assignment is counseled. We got to tell the devil, you lose again. You got to get V behind it. Because greater, somebody shall greater, shall greater as he that is in you than he that is in the world. Say, yeah, yes. What do you do when the devil comes? Uh, uh, ooh, you got to feed the devil. Feed him the word. Uh, thank you, God. Scripture tells me that demons tremble at the very name of Jesus. So sometime, Bishop, when I'm riding down the road, nothing's wrong. But I said, I'm going to try this out. I start calling the name of Jesus. So to make the devil back up off of me. Make the devil get out of my home. Get out of my mind. Get out of my body. Get out of my church. Get out of my affairs. Say you got the tone, the word at it. Because frustration, disappointment sets in like a cancer. Uh, some of us go through seasons of depression and there's something about discouragement sometimes when it hits us we can't put our hands on why we're feeling the way we're feeling sometimes the devil has us feeling powerless telling you there's nothing you can do about what you in. But I've come to tell my 
brothers and my sisters, you may not have the power, but you know someone who does have the power. Yes, for the Bible declares it. When it went down into the grave, and when it came out of the grave, he had all power, all power in his hands. Give your name a high five and say, my God has all power, shall all power. Uh, uh. I want to tell the devil, you may try to make me cry, uh, but I want to tell you, if I cry, I'm going to be crying before the Lord. Uh, when God sees my tears, something is about to happen. Tell your neighbor, uh, I feel it right now. Tell your neighbor, whatever you want, whatever you need, it's getting ready to happen. Come on, sing it to him. It's getting ready to happen. Whatever you desire, it's getting ready to happen. You need healing in your body. It's getting ready to happen. You need your family saying it's getting ready to happen. You need a door open. It's getting ready to happen. Say yeah. Say yeah. Uh, uh, I'm about to close and here. But warning, make a way. Let me see the hand of those who have had cancer in your life. Look at all of these. Survive. I want you to shout with a loud voice. I'm a survivor. Tell the devil, I'm still here. Tell the devil, I ain't going nowhere. Tell the devil, I'm more than a conqueror. Tell the devil, greater, greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. Say But when I was working for the light company, worked there 37 years, one day I was in the substation. These substations have high powered wires, big transformers breakers in there. And when I went in, uh, uh, when I went in there, we were about to start work. And so much the equipment looks the same. And what was dead, uh, I bypassed the equipment that was dead. Oh, God. And I went to the one that we didn't kill. And when I climbed up the ladder, all these votes, uh, uh, I climbed up, grabbed hold of thousands of votes. Uh, it should have locked my muscles and killed me right there. But the power in the votes wasn't the same power that my almighty God had. For the power of the almighty 
God uh, had his hands on me uh, and still dropping dead, I released my hand expecting me to see burnt marks everywhere. Uh, uh, but when I took my glove off, uh, cause electricity has to have an exit and an entrance. It entered in my hand. But when I looked Bishop Macklin, it was just a pinhole when I should have blew my hand off. When I looked at my knee, where it came out, just a pinhole. Oh God, who wouldn't serve a God like a God out there? Uh, I come to tell you this August body as I take my seat it's going to get there your children are acting crazy 